Geometry, Concept 7b, Algebraic Proofs. In this lesson, we're going to go ahead and take those algebraic properties that we talked about in Concept 7a and go ahead and use those to learn how to write a proof. Before we actually do that, though, we need to know the basics of proofs. So in this case, it says an algebraic proof is going to be an argument made to prove the answer to an algebraic equation. Well, in this case, just like you learned Algebra 1, where you were learned how to do a step-by-step -step e equation and solve it, this we're going to be doing it in a very similar way in this, but we're going to be doing it by doing a proof. The components of an algebraic proof are listed below here, so take a moment and go ahead and read through these. The key points here is that we're always going to start with creating two columns. One, The first column will be the statement column, and then on the right will be our reasons. And so our statements will be our steps in our algebraic equation as we solve, but then for each step of our, for each statement, each step, we're going to have to give a re reason, which is going to be one of our algebraic properties. It's always important for us to number our statements and reasons as we go so we can make sure to keep those organized. The very first thing that we always want to do, the very first statement, is always going to be the equation that we're given. So this is going to be our first statement will be that equation, our first reason is always given. This is going to be true for geometric proofs as well. From there then what we want to do is solve the equation step by step using the appropriate algebraic property. Each property should be used on a separate step. Example, we can't use distribution and addition on the same line. But remember it is okay to do multiple uh, examples of the exact same property in the same step. So like I can combine like terms on both sides of the equation in the same step if we want. Next important part is that we do not want to show work. The reasons should be get, uh, the reasons that are given should be enough. So we're not going to be showing our work as we go through this. And then finally, the final step should always end with what you're trying to prove. So we're always going to be given this our first part where we're starting with, but then we're also going to be given the part at the end which we're trying to prove. In this case of an algebraic proof, it should always be that solution, if it exists. So I'm going to point, here's a couple of examples of some algebraic proofs. Notice that we have a given statement, which is given to us that equation x over 5 minus 2 plus 4 equals 7, and we're trying to prove x equals 25. Notice all the statements on the left, and then all the reasons on the right. I wanted to point out a couple of things here on these first couple of examples, but like in step two here, substitution, since we are just combining the negative 2 plus 4 on the left-hand side of the equation, this is going to be substitution and not addition or subtraction. So remember, those properties only work if we're doing that to both sides of the equation. And like number three, in this case, this is going, we're subtracting here that 2 over to get 5. But it's important for us to always write out the full property. So like in this case, I wanted to write out subtraction and not just write like SUB period because that can be easily confused with like substitution. So make sure we're writing out our full properties. Again, notice that the very last step here was what we were trying to prove that X is equal to 25. We still have to give a reason there. In this case, that would be multiplication since we're multiplying both sides by 5. This one's going to be a little bit longer, but as we go through it, we're going to still see that we have that given statement and what we're trying to prove. And so that given is listed as our first reason. And so since we're, in this case, going from step one to step two, we're using that distri distribution since we're multiplying both sides by negative two. That's going to go ahead and give us that negative six minus ten in the second step. Notice that for the rest of solving this equation, each of the different steps is giving us a different property we're using. So like in first, we went from distribution to substitution to addition to subtraction to division. And then finally, on that last step, I went ahead and we wanted that first variable, or we wanted the variable come first. So I rewrote that as x equals negative 12 over 7 using a symmetric property because that just means we can swap both sides. In the third example here, notice that it's just asking us to prove the value of x. So this still means that we need to end with solving for our variable, but it's not going to give us what we actually should end with. So we need to be careful with our math. Notice here that given our given, in the second step, all we did was we combined like terms, combined the 6 plus 1, which is going to be, again, substitution. It's okay to write combined like terms as the reason if you'd like, but it really is that substitution property. So make sure we're using that. 
In step three, even though I have two lines for the statement, since we subtracted over the uh, 2x first from the right to the left side, and then in the next part we went ahead and subtracted the 7 over to the, uh, to the right side, giving us that negative 2, it's still only one reason since it's all the same property. In this case, since we just did subtraction on both sides. So we really only need to list that once. And then for the last step, since we were dividing both sides by 2, that's a new property, the division property. So that means that it's going to get its own line in the proof. So let's go ahead and kind of put this all together by trying our first proof all together. So in this case, it says complete a two-column proof for each of the given equations in order to prove the value of x. So we're just going to try to prove the value of x, which means that's going to be our final line. That's what we're trying to prove. So I'm going to go ahead and write statements and reasons on my heading to make sure that I always keep those in order. And I'm going to go ahead then for my first line, I'm going to go ahead and write the equation that we're given. So number one here says 3x plus 8 equals 23. And that first reason is always going to be given. So if we look at our equation here, remember we're trying to solve. That means we need to get x by itself. And so if we follow our order of operations, that means we need to go ahead and subtract first, because we're trying to solve. So we're trying to get that 8 by its, get the 8 over to the other side. And so that means we're going to get subtract 8 from both sides, which is going to be 23 minus 8, which is 15. Notice how I did not write out 23 minus 8. Since this is a proof, we don't need to show that work because we know it's going to be subtraction. It's in our reason column. The next step to get x by itself here is we need to get rid of that 3. Well, since it's 3 times x, the opposite of that multiplication is going to be that division. So we're going to divide both sides by 3. And since it's both sides, this is going to be our division property. And so now the x is by itself. And so this is going to be the final line of our proof. And so we're done with our very first algebraic proof. Pause here and go ahead and try the next two examples on your own. Remember to start off with your given, and you should end up with your final solution, and make sure to give the appropriate reasons. Let's try this one together. So again, I'm going to start by writing statements and reasons. And then I'm going to go ahead and write the equation. In this case, we have x divided by 5 minus 3 equal to 10. But that first reason, again, is that given, because we always have to have a reason for every statement. So if we try to solve this equation, and remember trying to get x by itself, the first thing we need to do here, working backwards through our order of operations, is to get move that 3 over. And so since we need to, because it's subtraction, that means we need to add 3 to both sides. And so that's going to be our addition property, giving us x over 5 equals 13. This next step might be a little bit difficult if you don't remember this from Algebra 1. Notice this is a fraction, but fraction is just the same thing as dividing. And so to undo that division, that means we need to use multiplication. And so since we are dividing by 5, on the left-hand side, to undo that, we need to multiply by 5. So if we multiply the left-hand side by 5, we also have to do that to the right-hand side. And 13 times 5 gives us 65. So now the variable is by itself on the left. So we get x equal to 65. This is going to be the final line of our proof. And our final reason here is that multiplication. Our next proof here, we have x minus 1 equals 8 times x plus 6, or sorry, 6 plus x. And so if we go ahead and write that in this case then, again, giving us our first reason as given. Well, we notice that we have those parentheses, so we need to take care of those first. And in order to do that, we, that means we need to go ahead and distribute that 8 to both sides, or to everything in the parentheses. So that's going to give us 8 times 6, which is 48, and 8 times x, which is 8x. So now we have that x minus 1 equal to 48 plus 8x, with the second reason being that distribution that we did. From here, there's a couple different ways that we could move things over to either sides of the equation, but I chose in this case to go ahead and add that 1 over to both sides, just so I get that x by itself there. 
So since we added one to the left hand side, we also have to add it to the right hand side. And notice I added it to the 48 in the correct column. So I guess it was 49. From then we need to move over the 8x so we have all the variables on the same side. And so to move over that 8x, since this is addition, we need to subtract. So that's going to be 1 minus 8x giving us a negative 7x equal to 49 using the subtraction property. And then finally to get the x by itself, we're going to have to go ahead and divide by negative 7. And 49 divided by negative 7 is still going to give us, in this case, a negative 7 since they positive divided by a negative. And this was done on both sides, so this is going to be our division property. You might notice that I'm just writing the name of the property and not actually the word property. You could do either way if you like. There's not a wrong way to do that. But this is going to be our final line of our proof since we have the variable by itself. Let's try this last one here. So we go ahead and have our statements and reasons columns. Again, it is important to number each of the steps to make sure that we can always correlate the statement given with the reason. So, Because sometimes these proofs can get long and we want to make sure that we stay organized. So we have that given statement. Well, if we notice on the left hand side, we have two variables. We have that 5x and the 3x. So I'm going to go ahead and combine those like terms to give us 2x. Notice, since it was combining like terms, we didn't do it, we didn't subtract 3 from both sides. We just saw on the left hand side here. This is just going to be combining like terms or, again, that substitution property. And I want you to go ahead and write down substitution so you're practicing that. The next step, though, since we're trying to get the variable by itself, well, we need to get that 1 over to the right-hand side. In this case, then, since we are it's an addition, we, that means we need to subtract. So we're going to be subtracting 1 from both sides. Since it is from both sides, this is going to be subtraction. And so we need to go ahead and make sure we're writing out that, not just abbreviating, or we can confuse the two. This gives us right here 2x equal to 0. Now the variable is still not by itself there, so we need to go ahead and get the x by itself, and we undo that mul multiplication by using the division property. And so if I divide both sides of the equation by 2, well, 0 divided by 2 is still 0, and so we get x equal to 0, which is a number. So we have a solution here, just, just 0. It's okay. And so since the variable by, is by itself, we have a final reason. This algebraic proof is complete.